The 50s and 60s was the era of Marilyn Monroe. Her fame inspired many lookalikes as film studios scrambled to get a piece of the Marilyn pie. There was an insatiable desire for hot, blonde bombshells in the press and films and on television. Some of these Marilyn-esque beauties achieved real and long-lasting success, celebrated as much for their good looks as their smarts and acting ability. Anita Ekberg, for example, was a beauty queen turned Italian film superstar, reaching her pinnacle after appearing in Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita. Other starlets were, perhaps unsurprisingly, one-hit wonders, or fell prey to exploitation and drug addiction. In this video, we take a closer look at some of the most beautiful blondes of the 50s and 60s. Jean Carmen Jean Carmen was an Arkansas beauty who ran away from home at age 13. She made her way to the bright lights of New York City, where she worked as a dancer and men's magazine model. Surprisingly, she was a talented trick shot golfer. She made decent money touring with fellow trick golfer Jack Redmond. She was rumored to be a close friend of Marilyn Monroe, who helped her get several roles in popular films from 1951 onwards. Untamed Youth and I Married a Woman were among the more famous of those movies. She moved to Orange County, California in 1978, where she died of natural causes at age 77. Martine Carroll Some considered Martine Carroll to be the European rival to Marilyn Monroe. She was born in 1922 in France and performed on the French stage and in movies throughout the 40s. She caught the eye of 20th Century Fox for her role in a 1950 movie about the French Revolution called Caroline Cherie. They asked Carroll to sign a contract with them in 1954. She appeared in a few forgettable films before her career was cut short by the rise to fame of 60s sex icon Bridget Bardot. She died of a heart attack at the young age of 46. Are you fascinated by the lives of vintage Hollywood beauties? Keep on top of the girly goss by subscribing to Factsverse and hitting the notification bell. Be sure to like and watch this video too so you keep getting recommended videos you want to watch. Diana Doors Diana Doors was born Diane Mary Fluke in 1931 in Swindon, England. She was passionate about performance from an early age and studied at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. Upon graduation, she changed her last name, Fluke, to Doors and quickly landed her first role at age 16. A few years later, her flourishing British career got her noticed by Hollywood. She signed a three-picture deal with RKO Studios, though only completed two films with them. I Married a Girl, and Unholy Wife, before being released from the contract. She separated from her first husband, Dennis Hamilton, in 1958 and promptly married Hogan's Heroes and Family Feud star Richard Dawson. In 1962, the two divorced, and she went on to marry the love of her life, actor Alan Lake, just two years later. They remained together until Doors' early death from stomach cancer in 1984. Anita Ekberg A beauty queen turned Universal Studios actress, Anita Ekberg was quickly labeled Paramount's Marilyn due to her blonde locks and sultry pout. She shot to fame in the 50s in movies alongside male stars like Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. But her career was in decline by the end of the decade. She readily admitted preferring riding horses to studying acting techniques, so that might have something to do with it. But not before she made one last great film with Fellini, Dolce Vita. Ekberg was ill for a long time before she finally passed away in Italy in 2015. She was 83. Martha Heyer Unlike many contemporaries, Martha Heyer, born in Texas in 1924, decided to finish college before entering the film industry. She landed her first role as an extra in the 1946 movie The Locket. From there, her career only went up, culminating in a lead spot alongside Frank Sinatra in Some Came Running in 1958. The performance landed her an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Though her last film was The Day of the Wolves in 1973, she did publish a popular book about her life in 1990 titled Finding My Way, a Hollywood memoir. Adele Jurgens. It's unknown whether Adele Jurgens aspired to greatness, but she certainly garnered a fair amount of popularity in B-movies of the late 40s and 50s. 
After signing with Columbia Pictures in 1944, she dyed her brown hair blonde and was promptly labeled The Eiffel by movie executives, the press, and fans alike. She mostly played chorus girls or hardened floozies and even played Marilyn Monroe's mother in Ladies of the Chorus, although she was only nine years older than the starlet. Jurgens died in 2002 at the age of 84 and was buried in Oakwood Memorial Park in Chatsworth, California. Barbara Lang Barbara Jean Bly was born in 1928 as a Hollywood baby. Her mother was also a star. She danced in silent movies under the name Esther Kaufman. When Barbara started performing as a model, singer, and piano player as a teen, she changed her surname to Lang, as it sounded more appealing. In 1953, she was diagnosed with polio, and though she recovered, she was plagued by fatigue her entire life. In 1957, she signed a contract with MGM and worked on a few moderately successful movies and a few more lucrative stage and TV guest appearance roles. She once dated Elvis Presley, and she married twice in her life, though both ended in divorce. After a failed suicide attempt in 1958, she faded into obscurity dying of pneumonia in L.A. in 1982. Joy Lansing Joy Lansing was born in Utah in 1928, the daughter of a housewife and traveling salesman. She landed her first film roles at a young age in the 1948 movies The Counterfeiters, Julie Misbehaves, and Easter Parade. Lansing continued to get primarily uncredited roles until 1955, when she debuted on TV in sitcoms like Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok and I Love Lucy. It wasn't until she got the part of Shirley Swanson in The Bob Cummings Show that people began to think she was more than just a pretty face. Lansing's most famous role was in the 60s. She played Lester Flatt's wife on the Beverly Hillbillies. Despite becoming more prominent in later years, Lansing was sadly diagnosed with breast cancer and died in 1972. Jane Mansfield Jane Mansfield was born in 1933 as Vera Jane Palmer. Sadly, her father died when she was just three. Her mother brought her up on a meager teacher's salary. After her first marriage to Paul Mansfield, the aspiring actor went to the University of Texas to study acting. After giving birth to her first child in 1950, the family uprooted and moved to L.A. to pursue Mansfield's dream of becoming an actress. She landed supporting roles in successful movies throughout the 50s, but by 1960 had developed the stereotype as a ditzy blonde, an opinion that was cemented when she appeared nude in the controversial film Promises, Promises. In 1967, at just 34 years old, Mansfield was killed in a shockingly tragic car accident. Marie McDonald Born on July 6, 1923, Marie McDonald was known as Cora Marie Fry until she entered the world of acting. She turned down a place at Columbia University to study journalism for a spot on Broadway, and from there, McDonald landed a contract with Universal Studios. She mainly appeared in supporting roles and bit parts until in films and on TV. McDonald was probably known more for her scandals than her acting ability. Labeled The Body by the press, she was constantly in the news. She once claimed she was assaulted and kidnapped, which she later admitted to making up for attention. She died of a drug overdose in 1965 at age 42. Jan Sterling As arguably one of the world's most talented screen sirens, it might be unsurprising to some fans that Jan Sterling was a Broadway star for over a decade. Her roles in some of the film noir movies popular in the 50s, like Billy Wilder's Ace in the Hole, landed her minor roles in other popular films throughout the decade, including an Oscar nomination for The High and the Mighty. Between the 60s and 80s, Sterling worked in TV, appearing in shows like Little House on the Prairie and Three's Company. She died in 2004 at age 82. Mamie Van Dorn Born Joan Lucille Olander in South Dakota in 1931, Mamie Van Doren was given her stage name by Universal Studios, who hoped to cash in on the popularity of the newly inaugurated First Lady Mamie Eisenhower. She started acting on TV at age 13 and went on to work as a showgirl in Vegas in the 50s. Van Doren posed as a pinup for Alberto Vargas. The image appeared in the July 1951 issue of Esquire. Not long after, Universal Studios offered her a demanding seven-year contract, hoping she would rise to Marilyn Monroe-level fame. 
Van Doren typically landed the bad girl parts in sexploitation films, most notably the 57 movie Untamed Youth. In 1987, she wrote an autobiography called Playing the Field, and today she has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think this list of 50s and 60s blonde bombshells is complete, or would you add someone else notable to the list? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.